Hi friends, welcome to our channel Piping Mantra. This is the continuation to the last part of the column video where we have seen distillation column, type of columns, internals and their types and basic operations of typical column. So in this video we are going to discuss about column piping along with column location as per PNID and unit plot plan, nozzle orientation of column, access and platform, platform and letter orientation, sequence of column piping, column piping support and flexibility, some reference layout and nozzle orientation drawings. So without getting any further ado, let's get to the video. First topic of this video is column location. Location of a column on a process unit plot plan shall be based on some criteria. PNID showing interconnected equipments and minimum elevation required for column considering NPSS requirement for bottom pumps elevations of column and connected equipment as per process. Spacing between columns and adjacent equipments to be as per project specification or international standards or as per HSE guidelines. Multiple columns should be located preferably parallel to the pipe rack. Project specifications access requirements. Minimum and maximum line sizes connected to columns. Column details like diameter, tangent to tangent line elevation, column internals, etc. Column dimensions determine the laydown and column internals determine drop down zones and maintenance access requirements. Now let's discuss nozzle orientation and elevation. Nozzles are located at various levels on the tower to meet the process and instrumentation requirements. Now comes manholes. Manholes are to be oriented, keeping provision for maintenance and operation needs. Manholes are usually located at bottom, top and intermediate sections of tar. These access nozzles must not be located at the downcomer section of the tower or the seal pot sections of the tower. Orientations of manholes should be with respect to tray orientation. Orientation of manholes, if possible, should be kept same across all levels. Normally, manholes shall be oriented towards dropout area within a 30 degree segment of column as this facilitates the lowering of column internals to the main access way. The manhole segment of platform should not be occupied by any piping. Manhole should be preferably oriented perpendicular to the downcomer. Where internal piping is arranged over a tray, manhole shall be provided but it should be ensured that the internals do not block the maintenance access through the manhole. Possible location of manhole and handholes within the angular limits of B or C degrees are illustrated in the figure shown on your screens. Next is reboiler connection. Reboiler connections are normally located at the bottom section of the tower. Figure shows reboiler draw off connections for single flow tray. This connection can be very important for arranging tray orientation. The simplest, most economical location for reboiler connections with the alternative location within the angular limits of A is shown. The angle A depends on the size of reboiler draw of nozzle and the width of the boot dimension B at the tray down flow. The return connection from the thermosiphon reboilers is shown. For horizontally mounted thermosiphon reboilers, the draw of nozzle is located just below the bottom tray and for vertically mounted recirculating thermosiphon reboiler, the draw of nozzle is located at the bottom head. For both the systems, the return nozzles are located just above the liquid level. In the plan view, you can see alternative location of return nozzle and draw of nozzles. These lines should be as simple and as direct as possible, consistent with the requirements of thermal flexibility. Generally, reboiler elevation with respect to column bottom tangent line is mentioned in the PNID or process data sheet. Piping should consult with process in case any change is required in this elevation. 
In case of column mounted reboiler, orientation of the reboiler should be decided considering the maintenance axis for reboilers. Now comes reflux connections. Reflux nozzles are provided with internal pipes that discharge the liquid into the seal pot of the tray below. Pick shows the reflux connections. Care must be taken that the horizontal leg of the internal pipe clears the top of bubble caps or bears. It must be ensured that the internal pipe can be fabricated for easy removal through a manhole or can be fabricated inside the tower shell. Plus, based on coverage area, this is the orientation range for reflux nozzle. Now let's discuss about overhead connections. The vapor outlet nozzle is usually a vertical nozzle on the top head of tower. In addition, the vent and relief wall could be located on the top head with a typical platform arrangement for access to vent instrument connections and top manhole. In a closed relief line system, relief wall should be located on the lowest tower platform above the relief system header. This will result in the shortest relief wall discharge leads. The entire relief line system should be self-draining. Now comes bottom connections. The liquid outlet is located on the bottom head of the tower. If the tower is supported on skirt, the nozzle is rooted outside the skirt as shown in figure. The elevation and orientation of this line is generally dictated by the pump NPSH requirement and the pump suction line flexibility. Skirt access opening should be oriented to ensure that the piping or instrument do not block the entry to the openings. Low point range should be adequately provided on the bottom outlet piping. Now, let's discuss about temperature and pressure instrument connections. The temperature and pressure instrument connections are located throughout the tower. The temperature probe must be located in a liquid space and the pressure connection in a vapor space. On your screen, you can see the range of orientation of pressure instrument and temperature connection on single level of tray. Clearance of temperature probe with down cover wall should be checked while orienting the temperature instrument nozzles. Now comes level instrument connection. The level instruments are located in the liquid section of the tower, usually at the bottom. The elevation of the nozzles is decided by the amount of liquid being controlled or measured and by standard controller and gauge glass lens. Level controllers must be operable from grade and platform and level gauges or switches may be from a ladder if no platform is available. You can also see typical orientations of level gauge and level switch nozzles and typical orientation of stand pipe that is brittle connections on your screens as well. Now comes access and maintenance facility. Access whether internal or external is very important. This includes accessibility of connections from ladders and platforms and internal accessibility through shell manholes handholes or removable sections of tray. Tower maintenance is usually limited to removal of exterior items, for example relief valve or control valves, and interior components, for example trays or packing rings, for which we have discussed in last video. Handling of these items is achieved by fixed devices, for example davits or trolley beams, or mobile equipment, for example cranes. When davits or beams are used, they are located at the top of the tower, accessible from a platform and designed to lower the heaviest removable item to a specific dropout area at grade level. When mobile equipment is used, a clear space must be provided at the back, that is side opposite to pipe rack of the tower that is accessible from plant auxiliary road. The access and maintenance facilities to be considered in the piping arrangement around a tower on freestanding columns, access for major maintenance to insulation or painting will usually require the erection of temporary scaffolding. Space for scaffolding at grade level and provision of clips on the shell to facilitate scaffold erection should be considered. Utility sections of two services, which steam and air, are usually provided on maintenance platforms. Steam and air risers should be located during piping study to keep adequate clips for support. Now let's discuss about ladder and platform orientation. Platform on towers are required for access to walls, instruments, blinds and maintenance accesses. Platforms are normally circular and supported by brackets attached to the side of the tower. 
generally access to platforms is by ladder platform elevations for towers are set by the items that require operation and maintenance man height clearance should be checked from the structural member of the upper platform that is minimum 2.1 meter the maximum ladder run should not exceed 6 meters ladders between the platform should not cross the platform access it should be on side of the platform multi level platforms and ladders should be designed considering a single path from bottom to top and down again different paths to access different items on the same level should be avoided platform widths are dictated by operator access the clear space on platform width shall be minimum 3 feet or 900 mm for platforms with control stations the width of platform shall be 900 mm plus the width of control station the platform for manholes and maintenance access adequate space for swing the cover flange must be provided top head platforms for access to vents instruments and relief valves are supported on head by trunnions access between towers may be connected by common platforming it is preferable to space platform brackets on tower equally and to align brackets over each other over the entire length of shelf this minimizes the structural design and interferences from piping on very wide platforms or those that support heavy piping loads knee bracing is required in addition to the usual platform steel The potential obstruction immediately under the knee brace must be kept in mind during platform design. Now, let's consider the steps of column piping study. As we have learned by now, the designer now starts thinking about the proper orientations of nozzles and provisions for access to the points of operation and maintenance as per previous slide. Considerations of the pipeline leaving the tower area and the adjacent piping shall be visualized. The first step is to orient the manholes preferably all in same direction. You should be remembered all those points that we have discussed. The levels of platforms are to be decided on the elevation view based on the manholes and access to relief valves instruments for viewing. All platform levels in the proper segment of the tower with ladder location should be drawn on the plan view. The manhole shall be shown in proper segment with the angle of orientation and the space for the swing of manhole cover taking davit hinge as center. Layout should be started from the top of the column with the designer visualizing the layout as a whole. There will be no difficulty in dropping large overhead lines straight down the side of a column and leaves the column at a high level and crosses directly to the condenser. This clears a segment at lower elevations for piping or for a ladder from grade level to the first platform. Consider flexibility and thermal load connected with the large dia overhead lines to the condenser at grade level or higher level. On which we will put some light on the later part of the video. Nozzles and pipings must meet process requirements while platforms must satisfy maintenance and operating needs. In routing pipeline The problem is faced to interconnected tower nozzles with other remote points. The tentative orientation of a given tower nozzle is on the line between tower center and the point to which the line is supposed to run. Segments for piping going to equipment at grade, for example condenser and reboiler lines are available between ladders and both sides of manhole. Line approaching the yard or pipe rack can turn left or right depending on the overall arrangement of the plant. The respective segments of these lines are between the ladder and 180 degrees. 180 degree is convenient for lines without walls and instruments because this is the point farthest from manhole platforms. The sequence of lines around the tower is influenced by the conditions at grade level. Piping arrangements without lines crossing over each other give a neat appearance and usually a more convenient installation. The correct relationship between process nozzles and tower internals is very important. An angle is usually chosen between the radial center line of internals and tower center lines. By proper choice of this angle, usually 45 or 90 to the pipe rack, many hours of work and future inconvenience can be saved. Tower piping, simplicity of internal piping and manhole access into the tower are affected by this angle. After this, the information produced by the designer results in selecting the correct orientation of tower nozzle. After the steps, now comes 
column piping support and flexibility. First is pipe support shall be designed during planning the nozzle orientation, pipe routing and platform or ladder arrangement to avoid interference and obstruction for passageway. Supports attached to column should be as per piping support standard and load information should be sent to stress group for their approval. Lines coming to and from column should be grouped together for ease of common supporting. There should be adequate space between back of pipe and column shell for installation of pipe supports. Care should be taken to ensure that the support clips location does not coincide with shell weld lines. Support clip for utility and fire water lines shall be planned along with other clips. As already discussed, knee bracing for support clip if required should not create operation access problem for the below level platform. In case of a resting support receives relatively heavy load by large size piping, approval of static engineer for vessel reinforcement at clip location should be taken or load can be shared with additional supports at a lower position. However, stress group recommendation should be followed. Same type of clips should be used if possible to ensure ease of construction, turns or bends in piping if necessary should be made near the nozzle and support should be installed at the top of vertical run of piping as per stress group recommendation. Because of high temperature and stringent pressure drop requirements, reboiler draw off and reboiler return lines should be studied, routed and given to stress on priority for finalizing type of supports and support location. The figure on your screens shows typical supporting arrangements for an overhead vapor line dropping along the length of the column. Let's see some typical pics of column piping layout. And typical nozzle orientation of column at different elevations. So that is it guys, thank you for watching this video. Please hit like button and share this video with your friends and colleagues. Comment your feedbacks, suggestions or request a topic for our next video. And please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon for notification. You can also follow us on Facebook and LinkedIn for more updates. So till then, take care, bye bye.